Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. If you think that the ozone hole problem has been solved, then you have another think coming. Because what I'm going to show you is data showing that in 2021, 2022, and 2023, the ozone hole was enormous, very, very large extent, as large as it's ever been, essentially. The duration of the ozone hole over Antarctica was longer than it was um, in the past. And the depth of loss of ozone, the amount of transmission of UV through the stratosphere where the ozone layer is, um, was maximized. So we haven't solved the ozone problem. We put it in check by, well, in 1987, there's the Montreal Protocol was agreed upon to ban the CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, and other halocarbons that were destroying the ozone molecules in the stratosphere, right? Uh, those uh, molecules, CFCs, etc., were used very commonly in refrigerants and um, were replaced with less innocuous things. So the agreement was in 1987, and the ratification of the Montreal Protocol was actually in 1989 when, when the um, harmful chemicals, the CFCs, etc., were phased out, allowing the ozone hole to shrink and uh, be less of an issue, hopefully recover over time, which it's been doing slowly over time. But unfortunately, we have another issue that's come along with climate change. So climate change, of course, is warming the lower atmosphere where we live, the troposphere, very, very quickly because of the great increase in greenhouse gases that are increasing at faster than ever rates. The curve is bending up, not bending down. And that course, the, the rise of greenhouse gases corresponds to the increased um, emissions from the fossil fuel industry, from coal, oil, gas. You know, we haven't put a dent in it, even with all of these climate conferences, et cetera, it's still rising at record high rates. So what's happening is the lower atmosphere is warming where heat's being trapped by the greenhouse gases. Therefore, there's less heat that's able to warm the stratosphere, the, the layer of the atmosphere above where all our weather occurs and where the ozone resides. So the stratosphere is cooler and Ozone destruction likes colder temperatures in the stratosphere. That's why the ozone hole is focused normally over Antarctica, where the air, you know, very cold continent and the stratosphere is even colder. Occasionally, we get an ozone hole in the Arctic, and I've talked about, in the, about that previously. So the stratosphere is colder and it's crossed a threshold so that the ozone destruction is really large. Um, the ozone hole, like I mentioned, is back in, with a vengeance in Antarctica for the last uh, three years of data. The other factor is that the upper atmospheric winds, the stratospheric winds, or the so-called polar vortex, is stronger. And that's leading to a concentration of the ozone-destroying molecules um, and resulting in destruction of the ozone layer at levels that we haven't seen before. So let's show you the data. You can, it's open source, you can have a look at it yourself. I thought this was a very important issue to, to cover. Okay, so a while back, a report came out called State of the Global Climate 2023. And it's part of the, it, it came out from the WMO, the World Meteorological Organization. And it was all about what happened in 2023. It was published in March 19, 2024. Okay, and there's lots of good stuff in there. Lots of really important stuff in here. This is the report, the actual report. It's 53 pages long. And I think I covered it in, uh, video previously and you know i might revisit it i might do another video on it because it's so important but i'm just going to look at the ozone section in this report so page 24 just download the report pdf and have a look at these 
the, these figures here. So what are they showing? This is the area in millions of square kilometers, the southern hemisphere ozone hole area. So the gray curve is the previous years. So 1979 to 2020 is the gray curve. So there, so, so if you take all of the data through the years, it's, there's a spread of it, right? Um, and the, the gray line is the, um, the thick, the smooth, thick gray line is the 1979 to 2020 average. That's this line. Okay. So it starts up sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, beginning of August, and it runs all the way through to the end of December, basically the new year. Okay, so this is what we had in 79 to 2020. And look at the last three years. 2021 is the green curve. 2022 is the blue curve. And 2023 was last year's curve, the red curve. So the area peaked. The area set a record high of 26.15 million square kilometers of ozone size, you know, in sort of uh, mid-September. It started pretty early and it finished as late as ever. Okay, um, so the ozone hole is back with a vengeance. It's been back the last three years. This is the total amount of ozone so-called Dobson units, okay? The higher, the better, more ozone, blocks the UV. So look at the drop here. The minimum of 96.8 Dobson units basically sets a new record, or it's very close to setting a new record. The green year is also very low for a longer period of time. Blue, not quite so low, but it's as low as ever. The amount of ozone in the you know, and this is this is just uh, early October when it bottoms out to the lowest level. So the ozone hole is back with a vengeance. Okay, often people talk about when they talk about um, mitigating climate change or dealing with climate change, they use the example of the Montreal Protocol as a successful world treaty to protect and bring back the ozone get rid of the ozone hull, make it smaller and smaller. Well, unfortunately, climate change has come back and it's undone everything that we've done. Clearly, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem with the ozone hole. So let's have a, let's have a look here. Stratospheric ozone and ozone depleting gases. So Montreal Protocol agreed in 1987 ratified in 1989. It's funny because the other day I was trying to remember, is it 87? Is it 89? So I had to just Google it and check and that's the case. Both years are important for the Montreal Protocol when it was agreed upon and then when it was ratified and brought into force. So after the Montreal Protocol, the use of the halons and chlorofluorocarbon, CFCs, uh, was basically reported as discontinued, but their levels in the atmosphere continue to be monitored. Now, there's a very long lifetime in the stratosphere of these CFCs. These compounds remain in the atmosphere for many decades. Even if there's no new emissions, they'd still be enough, be more than enough chlorine and bromine present to cause the complete destruction of the ozone in Antarctica from August to December. So the, the formation of the Antarctic ozone hole continues to be an annual spring event. There's year-to-year -year variation in the size and depth, governed to a large degree by meteorological or weather conditions. The hole is not, strictly speaking, a hole. It's an area where the total column ozone in the stratosphere falls below 220 Dobson units, okay? So that's between below 220 on this scale. This is Dobson units across here. Okay, in 2023, the development of the ozone hole had an unusually early start. It was the sixth largest in the satellite era. It expanded to 26 million square kilometers on 21st of September, right here, 26.15 million square kilometers on September 21st of 2023. Comparable with the two previous years, 2021 and 2022, it was close to the maxima observed in earlier years, 
such as 28.2 million square kilometers in 2015 and 29.6 million square kilometers in 2006. Okay, this is data from the European, the Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Service, or CAMS. NASA reported a minimum ozone of 99 Dobson units on October 3rd, 2023. Right over, okay, that was the NASA, 99. It says here 96.8, this is the CAMS. Despite the area of the ozone hole decreasing in a typical manner through early October, it increased again towards the end of the month, remained at about 15 million square kilometers until the first week of December. So the ozone hole was unusually long lived in 2023. Its longevity was similar to that of the ozone holes in the past three years. And I'm, it's showing uh, two previous years of data here. The unusual persistence of the ozone holes in the past three years, and it's basically as bad as it's ever been, it, in spite of the Montreal Protocol, it was due to the below average stratospheric temperature. So when the stratosphere is very cold, it favors reactions uh, which break ozone up, creating the ozone hole. There was also a strong polar vortex lasting until December over Antarctica. So those two things, and these are related to climate change, right? Not the CFCs. So th th that's a problem. Some other drivers of the observed solar, uh, stronger polar vortex have been identified, including water vapor injected into the stratosphere by the eruption of Hunga Tonga Hunga Haipe. Okay, so there was a major volcano, it put water vapor right up into the stratosphere, which is, which is depleting some of the ozone. Wind patterns in the southern hemisphere, the, right, the polar vortex stronger, and climate change. So these are all factors that have worsened it. So again, this is the key figure here. We've got the envelope of all the, of the ozone holes from 1979 through 2020. And we've had a reduction over the years in general because of the Montreal Protocol, which was agreed in 1987, ratified in 1989 to ban CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons and other hal halocarbons. So the hole was shrinking over time, but now with climate change, we've got a colder stratosphere and we've got a strong polar vortex. And these things are leading to uh, near record size ozone holes in terms of the extent, the area in millions of square kilometers is up at the very top. The duration from August through to almost to, uh, you know, mid to late December. And the depth setting record lows of the amount of ozone in the, in the column, in the stratospheric air column, meaning that the amount of ultraviolet coming through hitting the surface of the earth is going to be at record highs over the, you know, underneath this ozone hole. So we have a problem with the ozone hole. It hasn't gone away. The Montreal Protocol, you know, helped, but the, the problem is back because of climate change. So thank you for listening. Um, please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating at my PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks again. Bye for now.